Ladies and gentlemen, March. That is when AMD will officially release the RX 9000 series, according to the company. So there's a lot of interesting stuff that's been going on, of course, for the RDNA 4 launch and graphics cards lineup. And there's a lot to talk about in this video. I also want to touch on some very intriguing rumors concerning the RTX 50 Titan. And we're going to get into all of that plus more after this quick message from the video sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So, AMD have been almost totally radio silent regarding the RX 9000 series. They, of course, did brief the press very, well, briefly at CES, and there were a couple of comments at their conference, but other than that, aside from Frank Azer stating that many of the performance leaks concerning the RX 9070 and 9070 XT were actually underselling what the cards were capable of, well, again, just radio silence up until the last 24 or so hours. David McAfee states, the Radeon RX 9000 series hardware and software is looking great, and we are planning to have a wide assortment of cards available globally. Can't wait for gamers to get their hands on the cards when they go on sale in March. Now, just for your FYI, he is, of course, the VP and GM of Ryzen CPU and Radeon Graphics at AMD. Now, what I will say is people took to Twitter as well as social media at large and have been pretty much very negative, actually, regarding AMD's decision for the delay. Now, ultimately, we can only speculate, and there are a lot of rumors as to why AMD would have delayed the cards. For your FYI, I've actually heard from a couple of sources now that AMD have allegedly updated the BIOS of the graphics cards. Now, I mentioned in a, a video a day or so ago that I had heard that that was the case, but that was only from a single source. And to be honest, I'm still a little skeptical whether it's true, even now I've heard it from a second source. And the problem is, I don't know what has updated with the BIOS. Maybe there'll be some changes to TDP or something like that. And obviously, when we finally get an official, official, official briefing of RX 9000 series, maybe we can spot some discrepancies in the specifications, old versus new. But uh, whether that's true or not, one thing is almost positive, and that is that they are using this as an opportunity to try to uh, play a game of chicken, or should I say counterplay NVIDIA. Now, of course, the RTX 5090 is due to go on sale in a few days, and the 5080 a little bit after that, but the RTX 5070 and 5070 Ti are the graphics cards that AMD are most likely eyeing in terms of graphics cards that it can actually compete against. And ultimately, it's not just, of course, about performance. If AMD can use this opportunity to fine-tune the drivers, and I suspect they're going to want to optimize and squeeze every last FPS. Don't forget, guys, if you're looking at graphs... <laughs> It might sound really silly, but if you have one card that's at, let's just hypothetically say, 93 frames a second, and another card which is at 91, is that margin of error? Yes. Does one graphics card <laughs> appear higher in the graphs? Also yes. And so drivers and optimization can make a huge difference. So even just a couple of frames a second can make a really big impact in the perceived value. Now, ultimately, it's not just, of course, how good the drivers are. There's a lot of other things to it, including, but not certainly limited to, features like FSR 4. Maybe they want more time to work on it, improve the quality, who knows? And ultimately, the pricing is seems to be the big concern. There are a lot of rumors online, and frankly, I don't necessarily know if I buy 100% of any of them because prices can and will change at the last minute. But the rumor is currently anyway that we'll see 500 bucks for the 9070 and 599 for the 9070 XT. But it's very possible that AMD may decide to change this depending on how the RTX 5070 and the 5070 Ti actually perform.
Now, additionally, Benchlife are confirming that the RTX 50 series supply will initially be quite constrained. But while I think that's not too surprising for many of us, the real interesting thing for me is the 5070 Ti allegedly is going to start to appear in the channels mid to late February, and the RTX 5070, that's going to be early March. So that could be another reason that AMD are delaying. They're like, well, you know what? The cards that we're competing against they're not going to appear for a while, so let's just try to make certain that we are as competitive as possible. On the other hand, there are folks, and I do understand your perspective, and quite frankly, there is a very good argument that it's like, well, if you had decent availability and supply of the RX 9070 and 9070 XT, it may have been just a good idea to try to hit the ground running and cut the prices as much as you possibly can to get as much market share Honestly, we're just going to have to wait and see how all of this plays out. I'll be very interested to see how the benchmarks perform. There is also another really good reason that AMD could be doing this. Don't forget you have the 9950X 3D and other chips and other products coming out later this year as well. So I can certainly see AMD doing like all red bundles and maybe make some very aggressive game bundles as well, which would obviously help to sell the cards. As always... We're just going to have to wait and see how all of this plays out officially. If nothing else, it's certainly interesting. Speaking of interesting, let's talk about the RTX 5090, or rather some variant thereof. Now, whether this is a 5090 Ti or whether this was a prototype 5090 that has basically since been cut down to the 5090 we know, or whether eventually it will form the basis of some type of 5090 Ti or even Titan, well, we can only comment, but... There is a very interesting engineering sample, and it's GB200A1. It has 2,000, sorry, 24,000, 2,000, 24,576 CUDA cores. The base is 2,100, the boost is 2,514, and the VRAM is 32 um, gigabytes, 32 GBPS, so that's 2 terabytes per second of bandwidth. The TDP is 800 watts. Now, it is a prototype board, so there's a very good chance that that wattage is well overblown maybe it could be running at like 650 watts or what have you for what it's worth quite some time ago i did hear that nvidia were going to release a ti but ultimately it kind of makes i mean nvidia were allegedly going to release the 4090 ti we've seen prototypes and of course it just never materialized into the market so whether they decide to do that same thing with the 5090 ti i don't know i've also heard that there is a titan that is being considered. However, that is going to be not anytime soon. The earliest I heard is potentially late Q2 this year. So that's 2025, if you're watching this in a couple of years' time. If so, let me know in the comments whether it was right or not. Um, but it's more likely to be sometime in Q3. And basic, I can't remember the full SM specifications, but it was like... Uh, I think it was a good portion of the die, maybe just a couple disabled. I don't remember the exact amount. I, I forgot to make notes before I made the video. But it's like 176 or something like that. So a good portion more. Um, but the real the real interesting thing was basically the memory. Uh, it was either, um, I think it was like 48 gigabytes as well as there was another one that was like 64 or something like that. And there was kind of some type of clamshell design. But we'll have to wait and see what they decide to do with that. Quite frankly... I don't know whether the TI will launch um, to the market, but it is quite interesting to see this prototype. You would also assume it's going to be bloody expensive as well. With that said, guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions, mostly on the AMD side of things. I am very curious. Do you think it was a good idea for them to delay? I can certainly, I can certainly see it from both perspectives. From the perspective of just someone who wants to test the damn thing out, and also, I can see it from the perspective of users who have been waiting. I do understand the frustration. And I also suspect that it's going to be some folks who just simply upgrade. With that said, it also somewhat depends on the market. I'll be very curious to see what happens to used prices. Um, the US and the UK and parts of Europe seem to be really different in how their uh, used market is going for RTX 40 and even RTX 30 cards and also RDNA 2 and RDNA 3 class cards. So it'll be very intriguing to me to see how the update cycle goes. From AMD's perspective, however, 
I can also understand why they would perhaps want a little bit more time to optimize the drivers. As always, <laughs> we'll wait and see how it all goes. Take care of yourselves, guys. Bye for now.